Yep, there we go. Good morning, everyone. We made it. It is Monday morning, President's Day. I actually was planning on coming, showing up head to toe in this George Washington <laughs> Halloween costume that my husband normally parades in once a year, um, like on Halloween, not, you know, not in the bedroom or anything, people. <laughs> Get your heads out of there. <laughs> but I thought it might be fun to come on and, you know, I'm just, my head's in a different space this morning. So it didn't happen. He might run up and get the trifold hat or is it tri-corner hat? What's it called? The tri-corner hat. And maybe Yoga Sherpa will make an appearance in the class before this is all said and done, but maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, it's Monday and I'm delighted that you joined us for practice today. Yeah. Woo. And maybe many of you don't have to work today. Not just those of you who are retired, but those of you who are not retired and just don't have to work. I'm delighted that you joined us today. So we're going to go get started on the map. We're going to start today doing a little breath work. And we're going to start in a position called Vajrasana, which is just sitting on your heel, if that works in your body. If it doesn't work in your body, come to a comfortable seated position of Sukhasana. There are lots of things you can do to, to support your body here. So maybe give it a shot before you completely rule it out. One is to put a little soft blanket underneath the tops of your shins and your knees. Another is to bring your block lengthwise flat between your ankles so that your sit bones have a little bit of nesting. If that's not enough for you, then slide another one, stack them again flat so that they're stable, or sit upon maybe straddle a bolster or a pillow or something. You want to get the body settled into your seat. Take a big breath in and let it go. Feel the lips, close the eyes. Ah, welcome yourself to this moment. One of the great mindfulness leaders, researchers, neuroscientists who who, um, and psychiatrist who, who inspires me is Dan Siegel. And I'm going to read to you a quote that he shares in one of his books called Whole Brain Child. It's the best parenting book, book out there, by the way, particularly for those of us who have children who aren't babies anymore. It's an excellent parenting book. And this is what he says about mindfulness. People have choices about what they focus on and where they place their attention. It gives them a tool and lets them integrate the different parts of themselves so they aren't held hostage by one negative constellation of feelings or thoughts clamoring for their attention. When children and adults can develop this type of mind sight, a, coin, a term he coined, they become empowered to make choices that allow them to manage their experiences as well as how they respond to their world. They learn to direct their attention in ways that are most helpful to themselves and to those around them, even during difficult moments. It's just a very simple reminder of the power of mindfulness, something that you practice each time you arrive on your yoga mat. Maybe you find other times throughout the day to practice showing up for your moment-to-moment -moment experiences without judging them. You show up with curiosity, you show up with just a sense of willingness to accept what is going on in that moment. And that acceptance doesn't mean that doesn't run to it. Passive, sometimes acceptance actually is the impetus for more activism. But you just have to first notice Take a moment just to settle in and be present for what you are experiencing right now. Check in with your body, check in with your mind, check in with your heart.
notice how much of this present moment experience is simply a story that you're hanging on to in your head, this virtual reality that you've created for yourself by repeating something over and over. Can you detach from the stories, the narratives, and arrive into this new moment? See what, what's new. And maybe each time you notice a wall or if you're outside a tree, just gives you the power to stand a little taller, feel a little bit more solid in your own physical body. And each time you hear the sound of something in your house, whether it's the laundry machine or maybe you're outside and you hear birds, remind you to listen, to open up through your ears to what's happening right now. And each time you feel the wind on your skin or maybe the HVAC system in your own house blowing on you, it reminds you to check in with your breath. Use these little signals throughout your daily life, your daily experiences to help trigger your mindful awareness of where you are. We're going to check in with our breath here. I'm going to share with you a practice called a three-part Taoist breath. And this is a breath that helps you connect with the flow of energy throughout your whole body. It helps you to regulate the pace of your inhales and exhales. And it also helps to release any emotional blockages or physical blockages in your body, energetic blockages, or maybe just bring attention to spaces of the body that are feeling tense or uncomfortable or just maybe where you're holding something. So the way this works is you're gonna sit up and I'll model one round for you. It's a practice I've been practicing for a few months now, but it's still relatively in the scheme of practices new to me. So I'm gonna guide you through. And I just invite you to think about, rather than focusing your breath on the front part of your body, we're getting into the kidneys, so beneath the rib cage, to really think about as you breathe, breathing into your back body today. Just notice how that feels when you consciously shift the location, the focal point of the breath, okay? So the way this works, as you inhale, you'll lift the arms up to the sky. And as you exhale, bend the elbows, bring the hands behind the head. And then in that same exhale, press the palms away. Now your arms stiffen here, so really engage into those arms. And then as you inhale, turn the palms up and bring the fingertips to your shoulders. And as you exhale, we're gonna press the palms forward, stiffen and straighten the arms and fingers, rounding the back. As you inhale, the arms lift and the heart lifts, find a little rounding in the back. And as you exhale, you'll bow down to the earth and maybe bring those arms back behind you or the arms can stay in front. And then we'll do this again. Inhale, rise, lift up, open up. Exhale, hands behind the head and then press the palms away. Inhale, fingertips to shoulders, bring your chin to your chest, and press forward, pressing the air away as you round into the back. Inhale, lift the heart and the gaze and the fingers, open up, and exhale, hinge at the hips, bow down toward the earth, child's pose. Three more, inhale, lift the arms up, Exhale, hands behind the head, press away. Inhale, curl the fingertips toward the shoulders. And exhale, press forward, round the back, chin to chest. Inhale, arch the back, lift up, open up. And exhale, hands at the hips, bow down toward the earth. Two more, inhale. Press out to the sides, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift, open the heart. And exhale, surrender to the earth. 
One more. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, press away. Reach the shoulders. And around. Lift up. And hinge down. Let's actually do two more rounds, but just see if you can guide your own journey here. I know you can. Believe in yourself and don't get too caught up in trying to be perfect here. Just make it work for you. Maybe you close your eyes and go with the flow. And once you reach down toward that final child pose, stay there. If you would like to move your things out of the way and just come right into your traditional child pose, that works. Giving yourself a chance to sink and settle down toward the earth. Feel the stable ground beneath you. Feel your presence right here, right now. Maybe with the back facing upward, you can continue to sense the rhythm of the breath right in the lungs and the ribs of the back body. Two more breaths. And as you breathe, connect with your intention for your practice today. What inspired you to arrive? What is present right here and now for you? And we're going to come into a table position. Find your way right into space where you can feel tethered through four corners. Feel the lengthening of the spine. Start to draw the lower abs up toward the rib cage, or up toward the spine rather, not the rib cage. And then continue that articulation as you find some cow and cat movement. Letting the breath take you on a very slow journey today. And it's Monday, we haven't done a um, Mandala Monday in a while. And we're going to move around the mat today, really gaining a full perspective in the round of what this moment is like for us. All right, come right back into your table position. Extend one leg and then the other, finding your plank pose, building some heat right in the core, bending the crown of the head forward and the tailbone back. And then make your way to downward facing dog. And I realize I didn't introduce myself. My name is Erin. I own Eat Yoga Drink, and I'm just honored that you chose to practice with us today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up for yourself to feel sensations throughout your body and to, to notice if there's anything happening in your life that you perhaps are, have been suppressing or denying or trying to brush under the rug the day when you're going to bring it to your attention so that you can you can feel it so you can heal it you're going to name it so you can tame it so with the hips lifted and the heels lowered and feeling that stretch stretch of fossil tissues along the entire back side of the body just breathe into this inversion one big breath and then let it go all right, we're going to come forward into a high plank once again. Drop the knees down and extend your right leg back behind you. From here, step the right foot between the thumbs. And we're going to, I'm going to 
need to use this real quickly. And on my knees, if your knees are feeling tender, do the same. We're going to sweep up into a nice low lunge shape. Interlace your hands behind your back, palms to uh, kiss the back of the head, and see if you can open up broadly across the chest. Sink into the tailbone and lift up through the sternum. Feel the opening across the shoulders, the breath. And we're going to let it go and then release the hands down and come into a little half split here. So just shifting the hips back slightly and the chest melts towards your thigh. And take a breath in and let a breath go. One more. And release. All right, we're going to come back into that low lunge shape and swing your left heel around behind you, extending your right leg out to the side, a little outrigger stretch. We're going to take some side bends here, just moving side to side with press. So move any way that feels good to you, maybe like a windmill or you know, octopus arms. You can envision and embody anything that you want here. We're opening up the lateral plane of the body, moving the spine in some alternate directions. One more big breath. And as you exhale, bring those hands to cartwheel over to the other side of the mat, the left side of the mat. Keep your right palm rooted down and extend your left arm forward. Pick up that right leg, inhale to lengthen. And as you exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, stretch the arm and leg away from each other. Exhale, elbow to knee. And twice more, big inhale. Full exhale. One more big breath. And connect. Reach that right leg back behind you. Bring the hands down to the earth. And then cross the left leg, I'm sorry, cross your right leg over to the left side of the body. And then maybe walk your hands around just a little bit to the left, finding that lateral opening once again. Where do you sense this? Maybe it's in the hips, maybe in the spine. Big breath in, full breath out. And then we're gonna walk our hands back to the center, extend your right leg back to the center, and then take your left hand and reach it underneath the right arm and just thread the needle here. So a little spinal twist. If you wanna lift the right leg to challenge balance, go for it or keep it down. Big breath in, full breath out. All right, release the twist, come back into a plank pose. Step the left foot back to meet the right. Inhale up to child, I'm um, into child. Whew. Inhale up to downward facing dog is what I meant. So you're in downward facing dog on the, facing the other direction. Take a big breath in, let a breath go. One more breath and release. Look to your hands, step or walk your feet to your hands and rise all the way up and exhale all the way down. Halfway lift, strong, long spine. Plant the hands and step both feet back to plank pose. From plank, you can drop the knees if you like or lower your body right through chaturanga, bending the elbows. Inhale, lift the heart. Top the feet come to the earth for grounding. And exhale, the child's pose. Breath in. Let the breath go. As you inhale, acknowledge what's present here. And as you exhale, consciously release that which you don't need anymore. One more breath. Beautiful. We're going to come back into that table position. Extend your right leg back behind you again. And then step the right foot between the thumb. thumb. Reach up. Open back up into that outrigger stretch. <laughs> and then cartwheel the hands back to the other end of the mat. 
Come into your high plank. Back to downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Beautiful. Inhale forward, high plank. You can drop the knee, step the left foot forward between the thumbs. Rise up, interlace hands, support the head as you lean back, opening up through the heart. And you sink deeper into the lunge, opening up spaces of the hips. Breath in, full breath out. All right, from here, we're going to swing the right heel behind us. Extend, oh, no, we're not. Come back, we're going to do our half split, sorry. <laughs> Shift the hips back. Bring your chest down towards your side. Let's do that first. Notice what you're sensing, and how does the breath help release tightness? All right, now we're going to come back up into the lunge and then shift the right heel behind us. Extend your left leg out, and just find your, you know, your free-flowing side-to-side lateral flexion of the spine. Maybe you take it really slowly. Maybe you like those uh, blow-up things at the car dealership where your arms are just waving wildly. What feels good to you? Or maybe sensing how the breath can inspire the pace of the movement. And on the next breath, go ahead and cartwheel the hands around to the opposite side of the mat. Keep that left leg back behind you. Right arm goes forward. Big breath in. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach apart. And exhale, round. Tuck the navel up towards your spine. Two more. Big breath. Using all the other muscles to help you feel stable here. All right. From here, keep that left leg back behind you, but root it down. Right palm will sweep underneath the left arm. Coming into your twist. Keep trying to draw that left hip point down so it faces the earth rather than spins open. That'll help encourage a deeper spinal twist. If you want to lift the left leg for a little balance challenge, go for it. You can even bind. Breathe in. And breathe out. More breath. All right, come out of that, step back into your high plank, back to downward facing dog. Look to your hands, walk, hop, step, however you'd like to get there, keep the hands, rise all the way up. Exhale back down, halfway lift, hands to the earth, step back, hop back, go through your slow, high plank to low. Notice everywhere you go, open up the heart, back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Come forward into your plank, drop the knee, step the left foot forward, sweep up, open up, back into your little outrigger stretch, then cartwheel the hands. Step back to plank, to downward facing dog. Where is your mind? Big breath in. Full breath out. Building acceptance for what we notice, but we do have to first tune in to notice. We have to be present to see what's there, and then we decide what we're going to do about it. Sometimes you don't have to do anything about it. Sometimes the feelings and sensations dissipate on their own. But the point is, you have the power to shift your mental focus. You can sit with it and work through it, or you can think about something else. So what are you thinking about now? Big breath in. I'm thinking about what we're going to do next. <laughs> but I got you. Don't worry. Big breath in. And full breath out. Good. Look to the front of the mat. Step or hop feet to hands. Rise all the way up. 
And exhale back down. Halfway lift. Hands to the earth. Step or hop back. Go through your flow. A simple sun salutation. Uh, lift your right leg to the sky. Step your right foot between your thumbs. Come into a low lunge. And then shift over to Skandasana on the other side. Oh, my goodness. Was anyone else's inner thighs burning after last week? Woo! From here, we're going to frame the left foot and then step back into high plank. From high plank, lower chaturanga. Inhale, scoop the heart up. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Breathe in and let it go. Look to the front of the mat. Now, when I say front, it's wherever your hands are. I know you may be thinking you're at the to your hands. A hopper step, feet to hands. Rise up. And exhale back down. Halfway lift. Hands to the earth. Step, hop, however you want to flow. High to low. Taking your attention wherever you go. Back to downward facing dog. Right leg again, lift it up, step between the thumbs, low lunge. Send that one over to the left. Mm-hmm, we're doing it again. Then frame the left foot, just pivot your way around to the other end. Step back, high plank, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, let the heart sing, find your back bend to downward facing dog. Breathe. Mandala Monday, breathe in and breathe out. All right, look to the front of the mat, step or hop to stand. Rise up, grow a little taller. And exhale, surrender a little deeper. Let it all go. Halfway lift, hands to the earth. Make your way through your flow. Really attentive to what's engaging in the body. Lift the left leg high, three-legged dog. Step through, low lunge. Shift over, skandas, and over to the right. Mm -hmm. And then frame the right foot, pivot to that direction. Step back, high plank. Lower, chaturanga. Inhale, lift the heart. Back to downward facing dog. Breathe. And release. Look to the front of the mat and feet to hands. All the way up and all the way back down. Halfway. Through your flow. Nice. Left heel high, three legged. Step through, low lunge. Shift to the right. Side. Um, lunge and then fingers frame the right foot step back high to low plank inhale to down dog mm -hmm. drop your knees hips to heels come back to your balasana child pose What's here now? What is this moment like for you? What experience are you having? Do you notice something common thread or common thought that keeps pulling you away, trying to drag you into a vortex? Is it serving you? Is it enlightening you, entertaining you, inspiring you? Or is it damaging you? Is it leaving you with self-limiting thoughts? Is it making you feel stuck? 
And if you're at that crossroads, you make the choice where you want your thoughts to go. And when you direct your attention, you give all of your breath, all of your energy, all of your attention into that space. Watch that develop through your nurturance. Take another breath. Beautiful. From here, we're going to make our way back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. And breathe out. Move to the front of the mat. Step or hop feet to hands. Rise up. Hit the palms and drive them right through the center of the heart, right through the midline of the body. We're going to step back with the left foot arriving into warrior one. So you step it back over to the left just a little bit. So you create some space through the hips. Adjust the hips. Soften into the shoulders. Feel shoulders over ribs, ribs over the hips. You're ready. The arms can lift up. Maybe you bring those palms to kiss once again. Maybe you fold the fingers and release just the pointer and the thumb. Kali Mudra. Soften the shoulders down from the ears. And then start to point forward with control. Again, stiffening into the arms just a little bit, just like that three part Taoist breath. Feeling engagement through the shoulders, through the arms. This is where we remove the obstacles that are keeping us from having a flow of thoughts that serve us. Remove the obstacles which are the criticism, the doubt. About something that you may want to remove. And if at any point you can inhale the arms back up and exhale back to sort of slay those beasts. Take a big breath. And then peel the fingers apart from each other. Keep your left arm forward and start to open your right arm to the right. We're going to find a little twist here in our warrior shape. So keep grounding heavily into that left foot. You can rotate open to the right. Yes. Take a breath. Then bring that right hand back to kiss the left. And as we open the left arm now, we're going to spin the left heel open, coming into a warrior two. That may mean adjusting the footing just a little bit. So adjust what you need to. Breathe in. Again, feel the firmness from the shoulders out through the tips of the fingers. The hands are really engaged. Breathe. Beautiful. Let's reverse the warrior. Flip the palm, the right palm up to the sky, opening up the right side. Melt into that lunge. One more breath. Back to warrior two, and then straighten the arms and legs, rotate the toes to the right, the right toes to the right a little bit. And then we're gonna find warrior two to the other side of the mat. Still arriving with determination, with presence. Breath in and breath out. Lift that left palm, reverse the warrior. Melt a little deeper into the lunge. One more breath. Beautiful. Cartwheel the hands to frame the left foot. Come into a low lunge. From here, take a twist. So peel the left arm up to the sky. And stay here or step that left foot back, back on the right for a side plank variation. Ensuring that the shoulders are stacked over that bottom wrist for support. Feeling the obliques that we've been stretching. Power up to lift your hips away from the earth. Take one more breath. Back to high plank. And go through your flow. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Breath in and breath out. 
We'll take that slow, but this time one breath, one movement. So look to the front of the mat, feet to hands. Rise up, hands up the heart, reaffirming your intention. Step the left foot back, warrior one. Clasp the hands, Kali Mudra, slay the beast. And then open the right arm for a twist. Back to center. Open your hips, open the left arm, warrior two. Adjust the feet, it needs to be adjusted. Beautiful. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale, five pointed star. And exhale, warrior two to the other side. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, hands cartwheel to frame the left foot. Stay in your twist or step into your side plank. You can also take a wild thing if you want to flip that left leg behind you. Take a breath. Back to high plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, cobra, whatever serves you. To downward facing dog. Breathe. And let it go. Look to the front of the mat, feet to hands. Rise up. Hands right to the heart. Check in with your breathing. Sense that palpable rhythm of life through the heart beating. How can you use that breath to release tension? How does it feel to get still? From here, we're going to step the right foot back. Warrior one. Establish your grounding, establish your presence. Arms up. Once again, maybe you find Kali, but you interlace in a different way. Maybe sliding the fingers over one or having the other thumb on top if you release the pointer finger. A big breath. Maybe you come face to face with something uncomfortable. You build up your courage to let it be there just as it is. Take another breath. Release the fingers. Start to peel the left arm open. Feel yourself twisting to the left through the rib cage. Fingertips are involved, engaged, a little rigid maybe as you reach in opposite directions. One more breath. Bring that left palm to meet the right. The right arm opens, the right hip opens, spinning to your warrior two. Heel toe that right foot back a little bit, creating the space you need in your hips for your warrior. Use the breath to help find a little bit more space as you open up. Really nice concentration. You guys look great. Flip the left palm, reach it up and over, reverse, exalting your warrior, celebrating having come face to face with something difficult. Take another breath. Beautiful back to warrior two. Straighten into your five-pointed star and rotate other direction, warrior two. Right leg leads, gaze up over the right hand. Bring a slight drawing of the shoulder blades together, just slightly, just enough to feel a little bit more open for your heart. Take breath in, full breath out. Let the right palm reverse the warrior. Melt into the lunge, try not to straighten the leg, the right leg. 
Another breath. On the exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame the right foot, low lunge. Find your twist, right arm up. With the option to stay here or drop your left knee or do any combination of that as you step into your side plank. Sipping in each breath of your power here. Really show up for that. One more breath. And we meet in high plank and travel through our flow. The downward facing dog. Breathe. And release. Feet to hands. Rise up. As the hands come to the heart, right foot steps back, warrior one. And your Kali Mudra. Find something to face. And then open that left arm for your twist. And the left arm comes to kiss the right. Right arm opens, initiating your transition into warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Back to warrior two. Straighten arms and legs, five pointed. Warrior two to the other side, yes. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, hands cartwheel to frame the right foot. First, find your twist, and then take whatever serves you here for a breath. A high plank, lower down. Lift the heart, let it sing triumphantly, courageously. The downward facing dog. Breathe and let it go. So nice. On the inhale, the right heel goes high. Step the right foot between the thumbs. We're going to melt the left heel down all the way. Warrior two, back to warrior two. All right. So, would you pay attention to your left leg and foot? Feel where it's connected. We're going to bring the right foot over to the left, finding a tree pose. So, go ahead and shift and bring the foot to the cover below the knee somewhere on the leg to the side, the inner edge of the leg. So you're externally rotating the right hip. You can lift up. Maybe your hands come behind your head again. Maybe you even lift the skull up a little bit, finding a little traction through the cervical spine. Take a big breath. One more. And then we're going to lift that right leg up away from the left and cross it completely over, finding an eagle bind. Squeeze the inner thighs together. And the right arm will weave under the left with the arms winding, eventually the palms greeting one another, if that's okay for you. Release. And release. Maybe you bring the axis of the spine a little lower. Going down through the tailbone. One more breath. All right, slowly start to come up. We're going to release the bind, hug the right knee into your chest, and then release it down. Turn a quarter turn to your left so you're facing the other end of the mat. Take a big breath in and fold. Halfway lift and take a flow. Mm. Lift the right leg high. Step between the thumbs. Back to warrior two, right side lead. And then back to your five pointed star. Right. From here, we're going to hinge halfway, nice long spine, reach the fingertips forward, 
You can even bring the hands again, once again, behind the head, lift up with the head, press down with the palms. Give a little strengthener into the neck while we're giving a deep stretch into the hammies and engaging our core. One more breath. All right, slowly start to come up. We're gonna find warrior two with the left foot leading. Breathe and release. Really focus into your right foot here, right leg and foot, as we bring the left foot into our tree pose. I have a wall here, I use it because it's here and I love it. If you have something to use, use it. Not cheating, it's being smart, being resourceful. Make sure you're external through that left hip. And that right inner thigh is pushing towards your left leg. Mm -hmm. And maybe hands behind the head again, or you grow your branches. Smile, changes your brain physiology. One more breath. Start to peel your left foot off and then wrap your left leg over your right, beginning your eagle. Left arm comes under the right. Palms kiss. The elbows lift up and away from your face. Feel the squeezing, the breathing. Another breath. Start to release. Bring that left knee up towards your chest. Hug. And release it down. You're going to turn to your left. One quarter turn. Take a big breath in. And exhale, fold. Halfway lift, flat back. And walk your hands out to your high plank. Nice. From high plank, lower all the way down to the earth. Bring your arms into goal post arms and one cheek to the mat, melting the body down. Resting for just a moment. Where can you feel the signs of life in your body? From here, we're going to come into a sphinx pose. So lift your head, lift your chest, walk your hands so that they are shoulder distance apart with your elbows bent, forearms parallel, fingers really spread. Your elbows are right about, I don't know, an inch maybe in front of the top of your ribs. Just stack your elbows underneath your shoulders. You can do this. You can also bend your knees out the thighs even to bring a little bit more attention to the lumbar compression. If that's not enough, you can press into your palms, lift your elbows. This is a great stretch for those of you who are on computers, sitting on computers all day. Keep feeling the shoulders melt down from the ears. Some more breath. Slowly start to release everything. Back to those gold post arms. Bring your other cheek to the mat. From here. We're going to do a little challenge. See if you can lift your feet in your hands, and I invite you to come onto your back, same direction you're in now, but try to do it without the use of your toes, your feet, or your hands. So you can just wobble <laughs> your way over onto your back, scoochy, scoochy through your hips. It's always fun to do little body and brain challenges like that. Yay, you did it. <laughs> All right, bring those feet down to the earth. We're gonna come into a bridge pose, so still working into some 
some spinal extension, but just doing it in a different way. So feet flat. If you wanted to take a more restorative version, you still have those blocks handy. You can lift up your hips and let the block come right underneath your sacrum. Otherwise, we're going to take traditional bridge together. So root down through your feet, start to engage into the, the legs, the glutes as the pelvis lifts up toward the sky. Feel the belly and the heart lift as well. You're on your shoulders. If you're feeling a whole lot of stress in your neck, you may want to put a blanket underneath your shoulders so that your head is lifted. When you're at your top, really notice where you can squeeze and attend to that space of engagement. So maybe you feel a little, a little bit more. Is the whole foot pressing down or are you just kind of on the edges of the feet? Is the whole foot involved? All the toes, everything but the arch that's lifted. Two more breaths. Beautiful. And slowly release down, really being present for, for that release. Let the back be flat on the earth for a moment. And then roll the knees in towards your chest. Bring the arms to wrap around your shins. From here, we'll take a happy baby with the hands either on the big toes or the outer edges of the feet. Getting into the hips a little bit if you'd like, spreading the knees. And then roll, massaging the back. We'll end with a, a spinal twist, coming back into those eagle legs, cross the left over the right, squeezing the thighs together. And with the arms open into a nice T-shape, let the knees drift to the left side. Maybe there's a blanket or a block to catch your knees. You're looking to try to keep the right shoulder to the earth, but if it lifts and you're feeling a twist, it's all good. Try not to get caught up in the aesthetics of your practice. We're just looking to offer Rotation in the spine. Let that be your focal point here. Sending breath right where you need it. Take another breath. And very slowly work your way to a nice flat back on the earth. And cross the legs, bring the feet down, find neutral for a moment. No need to rush to the twist on the other side. We don't take enough time for the space in between. That's where a lot of the learning and the growing and the changing happens. When you're ready, cross the left over the right, squeezing the thighs together. And let the knees drift over to the right side. Melting into your twist. One more breath. Come back to center, neutral for just a moment. And draw the knees back into the chest. Give yourself our signature hug. Maybe you want to kiss in the knees. <laughs> thanking your body and thanking your mind for noticing the body. I put in a plug here if you just take some final movements, anything that feels good to round out your practice. So remind you that we have a lot of yin experiences, yin yoga experiences coming up tonight. And each Monday we have our yummy 
through April 5th, we have our Yummy Yen sponsored by the National Landing Bid. And then I also have a few more Yummy Yen for 10 coming up on Sunday night, Sunday the 21st of February, Sunday the, Sunday the 28th of February, to which you are all invited. So eatyogadrink.com is where you can find all of these and more. We're going to start populating some of our outdoor spring experiences. But for now, let your body go and just be present for this delicious rest we call Shavasana. Take a, a minute to scan your body and make sure that you're not clenching the muscles tightly around the bones anymore. Giving yourself a chance to surrender into this rest, this moment of peace. Remember that when you make the choice to focus on what serves you best, you are integrating all the parts of yourself. You know you're whole, but sometimes you may feel a little disjointed, and that conscious awareness of where you are and what you're doing in any particular moment, showing up for yourself as a way to bring all those pieces back together to be present for your wholeness. And remember, as Dan Siegel says, you don't need to be held hostage by a negative constellation of feelings or thoughts that clamor for your attention. You simply can direct your attention where you need it to be. So in this moment, bring your attention to your breath once again. Bring your attention to your body as you awaken with some shifting, some stretching. Roll over to one side, sensing the ground beneath you and the new beginning all around you. And then roll up to your seated position with your hands together in front of your heart. Coming back into your intention for today's practice. Let's share a breath together in through the nose and out through the mouth. The love and the light in me honors the love and the light shining in each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Remember that this class is free for you, but if you're feeling like you'd like to donate to Eat Yoga Drink, um, you can find those donation, um, the donation information on my website, eatyogadrink.com. As always, I appreciate your support and I appreciate you simply showing up. So thank you so much. And join us again Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. 
Um, we've got our free yin class tonight. We have a free vinyasa class on Thursday night, also sponsored by the bid. So I look forward to seeing you when I see you. And also Galentine's Day, Kat and I are, so have some spots left for our Galentine's Day experience tomorrow, um, Tuesday the 16th of February. And I hope you'll join us. You can click uh, on my website, eatyogadrink.com, click on the schedule to find out the registration information for that. So I look forward to seeing you each again.